Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Andrew Chicken, and welcome back to another video. Paladins just released a brand new hotfix, which is more like a small content update than an actual hotfix, because normally when I think of a hotfix, I think of a few bug fixes and maybe like one or two balance changes, but this actually has a decent bit of content in it, too. So, yeah, let's just crack on with it. And uh, for some reason, they published these patch notes on Steam instead of their actual website, which is really confusing. I'll have a link to the patch notes in the description, of course, if you want to read through them, and I'll also show off a lot of the stuff in-game as well. But uh, yeah, let's get started. So up first we have End Times Prime, which is yet another old game mode coming back to Paladins. They are really just restoring every single old thing that was in this game at one point, which I think is good for the sake of having a lot of limited time modes in the game. I know some people at this point are getting fatigued by just, oh, we're getting a bunch of old content, where's the new content? But I think it's good to restore these for the sake of actually having them be a part of the game again and letting them be just in rotation as limited time modes and events and stuff like that. Uh, and once everything is restored, I'm sure they'll work on some new stuff. And they have done some new stuff recently, like Capture the Flag. So, and this appears to be uh, a prime variation of End Times, which is basically to say, I think, a new version of End Times or something like that. So... What this was back in the day was basically the predecessor to King of the Hill, where Atlas would create some weird rifts or something. Or actually, Vora would discover temporal rifts opening in familiar locales, with Atlas's voice gag on how to mend the seams of existence. All right. <laughs> Lore. And uh, the idea is every time a new uh, capture point relocates, both teams will receive a random effect. So, as you can see here in the game rules, the first team to win, uh, reach 250 points wins. Killing a player gives 2 points, controlling a capture point earns 1 point, and it relocates every 90 seconds to a different spot on the map. And there are 4 unique buffs that you can receive. Warp Speed is a movement speed buff. Quick Cast has ability cooldowns reduced. Anti-Gravity has gravity reduced and jump height increased. And Ultimate Engine causes ultimate ability charge rate to be increased. So... Yeah, this is basically, <laughs> now that I think of it, this is kind of the predecessor as well to a lot of the earlier uh, modern iterations of limited time modes, where you'd have a lot of, like, the earlier limited time modes just being like, oh, here's increased jump height, oh, here's increased movement speed, oh, hey, look, everyone has, like, crazy ultimate charge or something like that. Except this is all four of those on one mode, and they just kind of randomly rotate every time a capture point relocates, which is pretty cool. And then the original End Times exclusively took place in Shattered Desert, but this version has been spread across the realm to Shattered Desert, Foreman's Rise, Magistrate's Archives, Trade District, Snowfall Junction, and Marauder's Port. So a lot of the familiar King of the Hill maps, as well as an Onslaught map thrown in there, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, another event mode is back, and it's got a bit of a twist, and we will be playing it, of course, on stream uh, shortly after this video releases. Next up, we have Trials being refreshed, which means we're back to the first few regions with a different set of rewards. And uh, this time, they're embracing the same flashback energy as the event pass has taken, with returning Trials classics alongside some new options. Here's what you can earn beyond the usual 175 crystals and various chests. Here for the violence and the vibes, limited title, nice, and then some flashback challenger spoils including uh, digital space avatar, emotions avatar, point and click spray, striking snake, maldamba, mvp pose, and if you own all these, implying that these are all old cosmetics, then each roll will provide you with two team skin boosters. So yeah, I guess not a lot of new content for us veteran players, but there is a lot of new content, or rather returning content, for players who weren't there for this stuff at the time. Which, it seems that that's pretty good because a lot of players that play nowadays weren't actually available, or weren't actually around for the time when that was available, so... Yeah, uh, I guess I'll go cry in a corner, but I'm glad for the, uh, the newer players who have a chance to get some of these cool cosmetics again. Next up we have the Season 6 Ranked Frames, and this is going to be slightly controversial. Let's just, let me just read it to you. Season 6 Ranked Frames are here. Thank you all for your patience while we work to get these out to you. As a heads up, we made a few changes to the distribution of Ranked Frames this season. If you played multiple splits in Ranked last season, you'll be receiving a loading frame for each split you played where you achieved a different division. This means if you placed Masters in Split 1 last year and Diamond in Split 3, you'll receive both the Season 6 Masters and Diamond loading frames, which I guess gives you a little bit of variety because you technically were both ranks. We also want to talk about Grandmaster Frames. This is where it gets very controversial. This year, 
we are granting everyone who would receive the Season 6 Master's Loading Frame the Grand Master's Loading Frame as well. We don't do this lightly and understand if this seems controversial, yeah, no kidding, but we wanted to share our reasoning for this. Our Grandmaster tracking has had blind spots the past few years, which has caused issues where several players who did achieve the status of Grandmaster would not be seen by our system when gifting those frames. In the past, this often applied when a player achieved Grandmaster early in the season and then lost or decayed to low Masters or even out of Masters. With this process change for Season 6, we wanted to remove the frustration of not receiving a frame that players felt they should have received and not require them to contact support to receive their earned rewards. We also wanted to ensure our most dedicated players are rewarded for their hard work. We'd much rather avoid a quote-unquote too many situation after several years of too few. We'll share more on how we intend to avoid this scenario for Season 7 at a later date. So, yeah. A bit controversial, because if you did legitimately earn Grandmaster, like I did, for the first time, actually, I was Grandmaster for the first time in Season 6, then, well, you get your border. That's great. But also people who did not actually try as hard as you to get Grandmaster, who didn't make it to Grandmaster, will also be getting the same border as you, and potentially will be tricking players into thinking they were actually Grandmaster. Which, yeah, that is frustrating. I understand why, like, why, why they want to do this, but at the same time, I feel like it significantly diminishes the value of the Season 6 Grandmaster border, kind of in much the same way as the Season 3 Grandmaster border. Because, uh, fun fact, this isn't the first Grandmaster border I'll be receiving. <laughs> I have the Season 3 Grandmaster's border, but I acquired this illegitimately. I just got bugged, like, randomly, in Season 4. Paladins took away my Season 3 Master's border, which I had, and was using for a while. And the, in its place, they gave me the Season 3 Grandmaster's Border. No idea why. Game just glitched. And for a while, on my account, if you watched some of the videos at the time... Actually, I made a dedicated video about it. If I can find it, I'll put it in the cards somewhere. Um, I had my Season four master or Season 3 Master's Border equipped and locked at the same time. Which was really weird and really confusing. But, uh, yeah... That glitch happened to a lot of people, and it means that the Season 3 Grandmaster's border value is diminished. And I refuse to use this border because, well, I didn't earn it. But now you're going to have a bunch of people who do not have the same qualms about honesty as I do with a Season 6 Grandmaster's border that they did not achieve, and they're going to use it and trick people into thinking they're Grandmaster. Which sucks. It really sucks. But, uh, yeah, the rank system does have its bugs. I mean... If I just go over here and look, <laughs> you can't even see my wins and losses right now. <laughs> That's broken. And when I was Master uh, and Grandmaster, I could change what rank displayed on my account by just toggling the leaderboard. If I toggled the Master leaderboard, I would have the Master picture. If I toggled the Grandmaster board, uh, leaderboard, all of a sudden I'd have the Grandmaster picture. So the picture that displayed on my account was entirely dependent on which leaderboard I had selected, regardless of the fact that... Just based on the numbers, I had enough TP and it was high enough in the rankings to just be considered a Grandmaster. So, yeah, I hope that for Season 7, they're going to fix this system so that way they don't have to do this. Uh, they have a year to do it. But, yeah, it, it is a bit upsetting to those of us who did achieve Grandmaster legitimately. Uh, and I hope that people will at least try to be honest. If they didn't reach Grandmaster, don't use the Grandmaster border. I know it's tempting, but you're not going to feel good about yourself. You'll be lying to people every game you get into. Alright, so now let's talk about balance. There are quite a few nerfs being handed out here. First up, we have Fernando, whose base kit shield has been nerfed by 1,000 HP from 4,500 to 3,500, which is a pretty substantial nerf. And as you can see... It's a lot squishier now. Cassie, I think, is going to one-clip this. Yeah, she one-clips it, exactly. Six shots from Cassie to kill the shield, with Scorch and Formidable. However, it's important to note that Aegis remains exactly the same, so it now increases your shield health by 2,000, which is pretty hefty. So this is a lot more... Uh... So this is going to be considered a lot more as the dedicated shield talent, and it, the goal is to force a bit more choice between, okay... Do I really want that Scorch damage, and am I just going to accept that my shield is going to be really squishy? Or do I actually need the protection? Okay, well, I guess I'm kind of forced into going Aegis. 
So the goal is really, I guess, to make Aegis a little bit more relevant as the point tank talent, and also make Scorch and Formidable less effective, because currently they are at the top of the meta. Scorch, in particular, is at the top of the meta right now, and they want to keep that damage on Scorch, because that damage is fun. And I guess they've decided they want to keep the ultimate charge rate for now, too, although I think the ultimate charge rate is really what should have been nerfed about Fernando. Uh, but yeah, now you have less shield health to work with, meaning you're going to have to be more careful about your shield management and your positioning. Next up, we have a description change to Deep Roots, and I actually didn't realize this was a thing, but apparently the Crippling Throw travels 35% slower, and they've updated the description to say that. This was already an effect that Deep Roots had. I just had no idea it was a thing, and I don't think most people realized it either. But uh, yeah, let me just show you the difference. So we're going to pick Ferocity here with just a random build and throw the cripple. Whoa, slow down there. That's about as much time as it takes for it to travel. Now if we go deep roots, play the exact same build, get our root back, and... That is slower. Wow! I had no idea. So yeah, I guess deep roots is more of a skill shot than we original, uh, originally uh, realized. Next up, we have an ultimate change for Khan, that a lot of Khan mains, and myself, even though I'm not a Khan main, are going to be very happy about, and that's because Overpower's ult targeter has been reverted from Cone back to pinpoint hit scan. Khan ult has been really buggy as of lately. You can watch my short to see that you can miss a stationary target, who, by the way, I have to say, was in range. Some people hypothesize, though, the Ash was not in range. No. The range of Khan ult is this red range right here, so I cannot ult this victor over there, but I can ult the victor who's red. So, yeah, she was in range, it just flat out missed, and that's because Khan's ultimate is tremendously buggy because of this change. So, they've just re reverted it back to being a hit scan. It still has the delay, where if you flick off the target like that, you'll still miss, right? So do bear that in mind. But... Yeah, it should be a lot more consistent now, and uh, I guess it's technically a buff to one of the strongest ultimates in the game, which, uh, you know, people are probably going to have their own concerns about that, but I'd rather it be consistent, because it feels really bad when you miss a target who you clearly were supposed to hit. Now, I know a lot of players are going to rejoice about this. Leon has gotten a multitude of nerfs, starting with her health has been reduced by a 50 from 2150 to 2100. So, I guess if we run the HP card at max with this build, we now have 2350 health over there. So not quite the uh, satisfying 2400 number, but uh, yeah, health nerfed to Leon, which I think is fair. She is supposed to be a glass cannon after all. Second, they have nerfed her heirloom rifle damage from 450 to 425. So this is still stronger than she was pre-season se uh, 7, but now as you can see, just in the shooting range here alone, the kill threshold has been increased by one shot. So that extra 75 damage, that would have been dealt in the previous few shots before, when they were doing 450. Now with 425, yeah, the time to kill has gone up for Leon. Uh, but this, yeah, again, is still stronger than the previous damage, which was 400, so kind of in the middle of the buff and pre-buff state. And then, finally, Valor has been nerfed for the first time in, in its history, dare I say? At least in recent memory, going back a few years, it's always done 400 damage, but now it's doing 350 damage. So the auto-aim is going to be less impactful now. And this does mean that the burst combo is going to be less impactful too. So we can still do this, and that'll still burst if we use all of our abilities. But if we just let Victor heal up real quick, and then we try that again. Boom, boom. And then we just shoot. Yeah, that's about the time to kill now. And bear in mind, all of Leon's abilities get affected by armor plating, not arcane warding, which may seem unintuitive to a new player, but you have to remember that each of these, say you fire off a shot with your weapon, they count as weapon shots and they apply cauterize. If you look at the green vapors that come off of Ying, that's cauterize. It applies on the left click, it applies on the right click, it applies on... Uh, Valor, or, uh, Grace, I, I couldn't tell if I hit Fernando or, uh, Ying there. Yeah, let me do it again. Did that just miss? Okay. It applies on this. <laughs> One more time. Yeah, there we go. It applies on Grace. Uh, the only thing it doesn't apply on is her ult. Oh, wow, I just killed her. Whoops. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't apply on her ult. Her ultimate is an ability, but the rest are weapon shots. So, if you want to counter Leon just by armor plating, it's really, really good against her. 
The finer major balance changes are to Torvald, another S-tier character who people have been begging for nerfs for, and he got quite a few all based around his shield. So yeah, let's just start off with thanks grandpa. As you can see here, this talent is missing a big chunk of text, and that's because it no longer provides one second of cooldown reduction, so you're now only picking thanks grandpa for the additional shield health, and that shield health has been nerfed by 100 from 300 down to 200. So you can still get a decently tanky shield. If we just pop that on Fernando, it's about three bars of Fernando's HP. And of course, we can buy Guardian if we want. And that will be able to increase our shield health even further. And now we're providing four bars to Fernando. But that's going to be less impactful with Guardian now than it was previously. And of course, uh, yeah, no one second of cooldown reduction. So it's honestly closer on the playing field to field study now than it's ever been before. Of course, Direct Current remains unimpacted. Chad Talent, if you want to just play that and play Aggro Grandpa instead. Now, if we do pick up Direct Current, you'll notice that the shield only provides two bars to Fernando. Doesn't that seem especially low? Well, yeah, it is, and that's because they also nerfed the base protection from 650 to 550, so another 100 health nerf. And so, with Thanks Grandpa, it's actually more like a 200 health nerf, Compared to where it was previously, even though the talent itself only got a 100 health nerf. So at maximum, it'll be a 750 health shield. Previously, it was a 950 health shield, which was very, very beefy. And then finally, Recharge has had its uh, amount reduced from 2,750 to 2,500. Now, we're not talking about his passive shield health here. We're just talking about what's regenerated with Recharge. Recharge has always had a bit of overshield to it. Where if you're getting shot mid recharge, it'll end up generating 2,750 shield health instead of just the cap of 2,500. Now it just fills directly up to the cap. So, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty intuitive. Uh, but also, yeah, you will miss that extra health if you are being shot at. That's 250 less health you can receive while you're recharging. So, a lot of shield nerfs to Torvald. But they've kept... A lot of his strong suits intact. He still does 800 damage per second, with pinpoint accuracy, very good fall off, and the only real downside being that it's a projectile, so tracking will be a little bit harder at longer distances. His nullify is still really good. Pop that on somebody for two seconds, they can't use their abilities unless they have Rezil or they get behind a wall. Your teammates can finish them off, and you can also use it to stop people from getting away if you time it right. One of the most powerful abilities in the game, and with Direct Current, obviously Direct Current is still just fine right now. So, yeah, you can use that at a long distance. It's auto-aim, so you can counter flanks with it. A lot of his flank countering potential is still there, and I think that's actually really good, because I like Torvald being strong at countering flanks. It makes it so that there is a ready, easy counter for people to play, if they're tired of someone like Eevee or Vatsu, or if they see a good player in ranked and they're like, Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> get nullified. <laughs> like, yeah, it's annoying to play against if you are that flank player. But there should be some good counters to flanks. If we just remove all of them, if we remove Torvald, if we remove Shylane, if we remove Leon, all that, then, I mean, <laughs> champions like Vatsu and Eevee are just going to steamroll every single match. And that's not going to be fun for the average player, even if it is fun for an Eevee main for 15 minutes. So, yeah. I, I think that's a sensible way to nerf Torvald. Nerf his ability to pocket people, but keep his own personal strength intact, and make him, I guess, more of an aggro slash defensive tank slash anti-dive sort of thing? I don't know. Still a lot of really good reasons to pick Torvald. Still a very strong character, but definitely taking some huge nerfs here. Now, there are three bug fixes, the first of which is completely unimportant, and I'm not going to show it to you. Grok's healing totem description now shows its proper healing amount. Cool. <laughs> Second, uh, Imani's Pyretic Momentum now properly provides its movement speed bonus. Remember, that is the card, which uh, grants 40% movement speed for 3 seconds after using Frostfire Glide. So if we just Frostfire Glide, and then boom. We ride in style. We're moving very fast for 3 seconds, and then, yeah, we get back to being our normal speed again. So I guess that wasn't working before, and now it's working. Great. Finally, Sky's uh, card Ninja apparently also was not properly providing its Don't movement speed bonus. That is the card, which, uh, do I even have it in a build? I don't have it in a build. Okay. Well, uh, that is the card, which provides you movement speed while hidden is active. So if we pop that and then activate hidden, Try. we're now properly moving 
as fast as we should be, which would be the, uh, what is it, 20% from our passive, uh, plus our 25% from the card with some diminishing returns. So, yeah, I guess that's good. <laughs> Net buff for Sky, I think. Uh, so yeah, just three minor bug fixes. The hot, the hot fix, <laughs> the smallest part about the hot fix are the bug fixes. What's the point of calling it a hot fix, then? Nothing's being fixed. So confused. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this hot fix. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. It's kind of like a small update for Paladins more than it is a hot fix, like I said. Uh, let me know what you think about End Times, of course, if you've tried it already. Seems like a pretty fun game mode. We'll, of course, be trying it on stream. Let me know what you think about the trials. I hope they adjusted the trials, actually. Let me take a look before we wrap up here and just see, get, get a feel for the, the trials at the start here. Uh, so go here, go here. We got Temple Isles, which is the completion one, of course. And then we have Eastern Reaches, which, uh... Okay, it looks like the scaling is still pretty high damage and heal players for a total of 2 million health. But that's actually pretty achievable. You need to play like 10 games, something like that. So, uh, yeah, trials are back. <laughs>